Pero yo te consigo que... Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. No me he ido de a los cuatro. No me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los cuatro. Ah, bien, no me he ido de a los Wow, look at this Russian millimeter James the City. <laughs> what a bloody dancer. Look at this. It looks like it's got the original uh, plugs installed, like the uh, wax, you know, warranty void if uh, removed type thing on the screw. So maybe it's never been opened, but yeah, bugger, running switches just to have a banana jack for absolutely every range. There's the resistance range. <laughs> there's probably drains it. There's the current range. Look at the microwave. No way. And uh, look, we can look like that's resistance mode. What's that, DC? So I'm assuming that's AC. And uh, that would be our zero ohms adjust. And that's it. But look at this. Isn't that meter fantastic? It's just it's gold. Look at that. And it's bang on. Thank you very much. Six volts. Um, because we've got 30 full scale there, of course. It's uh, You have to multiply that by two, sorry, to get you know, uh, six volts uh, full scale. But that's basically what it is because we're on the six volt range there. But you actually read it from the, uh, the zero to 30 scale. Old school Russian time. Look at this. We're getting, getting, uh, look at the resistors down there. There are uh, range resistors for the various, uh, that would be the voltage ranges. Over there on the front, and of course the current ones over here. Yeah, give them those, because there's our range, there's our current range resistors, there's a big wire round ones there. And we've even got some, look, some extra wire. Are they on like little bobbins? Maybe higher resistance ones for the lower ranges. Very, very interesting. And a multi way uh, wafer in there, those contacts look pretty crusty. That's the, uh, that's the DC and AC selection switch. Mm. And there's our pot down there, all exposed. Thank you very much. There's our wiper. Going around? Oh, you can feel it. Oh, right, scraping the micro wire there. <laughs> Terrific. And I'm going to presume that these little funky glass things are the uh, diodes. They're, uh, they're the best protection. Back to back diodes for the meter. Check it out. Yes, point contact diode. Wow, I haven't seen one of those in a long, long time. Incredible. Anyway, you see our wiring there? That would be a uh, tungsten one, or uh, sometimes a gold wire. But anyway, that would be our. Um, N-type uh, germanium on the end there, so that's a, that's a low-drop germanium point contact diode. Definitely old school. Now that's got to be a first, right? In five, I opened five items and I got the exact same thing in both. James and uh, Heinrich have both sent in the Sinclair digital multimeter, the PDM at 35. Did they only ever do one? I'm not sure. No, they just made not held up. That's, uh, uh, that purple is a reflection from the um, my studio light here going through the... Uh, uh, well, it's probably red, but it looks... Purple. Anyway, um, this one's in much better nick that uh, Heinrich sent in, so we'll take a look at this, but uh, I'll tell you what, like, well, no, let's just use this one first. This is the flimsiest multimeter I've ever felt in my life. Listen to this. Wow. I mean, like, <laughs> how far is that flex in? That is awful. Oh, my God. Like, the uh, crusty battery foam in there is bronsky, but, oh, my God. Like, it is truly horrendous, but that's... Uh, you know, there's a typical Sinclair product for you. Anyway, look, we've got it. Uh, we've got uh, main range multipliers down here. Heinrich is uh, saying that you do have to do the range multipl multiplication yourself. So we'll check that out. But that's what James says. I love this. The other is you want to quite find it, then you could probably snap it in half with one hand. I think I could actually destroy that with one hand. That is, oh, wow. Did anyone actually use one of these things? Maybe the old dart. The one Heinrich sent in works. I haven't uh, tried James's one, but anyway, let's switch it on. And we do have a red display. It looks like it's almost like a, a purple filter. It's really quite strange. Anyway, uh, um, yeah, let's, uh, we've got a decimal point there. But the decimal point doesn't, uh, well, let's go over to volts. Decimal point doesn't switch at all. So it stays in the one location. So DC volts, you've got to multiply it. Yeah, you have to actually multiply it. Wow. Anyway, I'm going to in a voltage and see if it works. Well, sure enough, it does work. It's probably still within spec. I'm feeding in 6 volts, and we're getting quite 594. But of course, you've got to manually multiply it by that times 10 multiplier there. So that's 5.94 volts. But it's the resolution. I mean, it is basically three digits. Is it not? It's terrible. So let's go up to that's 10 volts. So it's reading a little bit under. I oh, know. There we go. So this is this three, three and a half digits. But 
Oh, gee. And it's just my point. You can hardly see it. Wow. I'll tell you what, though. It's bang on on the resistance. Good on your client. Oh, it's barely off on the current. It's been in one milliamp there, but, you know, it's all right. There we go. We've got the overrange indicator. Just flashing that. So we can go up to there. No. Hang on. What are we doing? Oh, sorry. Times one. No, these are the only milliamp ranges. We've only got one milliamp. And times 100. It's a bit confusing up here. Um, with, you know, like point one and then a thousand. You think that's like microamps or something, but it's not. These are only the two uh, current ranges. So, wow. Anyway, there's 100 milliamps. So let's take a look inside this stellar piece of uh, ruggedized Sinclair engineering here. It just slides up in our fuse. So how do you do it? It just slides like that and looks up. Oh, okay. It actually kind of thought shit out, but, you know. <laughs> kind of convenient when you want to see it in your multimeter and look for that classic tin plate. <laughs> wow. That, is that, it almost looks like it's got some sort of a, uh, is it a confirmal coating? Turkey, no, not really. There's a bit of a luster to it. So it almost seems like it's got uh, something like that. But, hmm. Well, I guess uh, Clyde didn't believe in screws because it um, have got plastic plugs just uh, holding this board down. Oh, here we go. They're soldered. They're soldered. I might have to be soldered. But I don't want to do that. I want to watch something. No, wait, hang on, this thing doesn't just slide off. This is ingenious from Clyde. There's another plastic slide that actually, the other one must have had it. It actually went through there, which holds in this whole uh, back piece, which means you can't slide the damn thing until you've taken out that plastic plug from there. There you go, mate. What someone was thinking. And we're in like Flynn, and we've got our uh, CD4007, but I have a 4007 off in there, a uh, CA3130, off it, is it? And then 3900, quad nerve, not bad, carbon trimmer. Oh, uh, okay, well, actually, no, there are one, two, three, four carbon trimmers. Thank you very much. And looks like some sort of uh, custom millimeter. Ah, uh, the AY5-3507, I don't know. Oh, do you know, is that general instruments? Wow, anyway, we have a date code. Summit Week 1977. Thank you very much. Oh, and there's our lead bubble display. For all you lead bubble display aficionados, I am one of them. I've still got uh, some old stock from the uh, uh, 1970s. Um, they would be the National Instruments. Yep, NF. Yep. They, uh, they cornered the market on those bubble lead displays back then. They really did. Wow, oh, I don't know. Oh, sorry, I'm touching stuff. Hey, look at this. One of them's fused, one's not. Now, exactly the same model number on the PCB and everything. Exactly the same model number model meter. Is this a uh, aftermarket hack? Perhaps. It could very well be. Someone went, oh, yeah, it's probably a good idea to have a fuse in there. That looks like, yes, they just bunched into that. Ha ha, beauty. We know we that chicken dinner. I can't remember doing that, actually. Um, I should try and get it out. Where's my very first multimeter I ever owned? Hang on, I'll try and find it. This was the very first multimeter I ever owned. I can't remember how old I was when I got this, maybe seven or something like six or seven, perhaps. Anyway, 20k ohm for belt, Radio Shack slash uh, Tandy. And it's the, um, what's the model number? It's probably on the back. There you go, it's my contact 22201U. Plus the manufacturer in Korea, it's a Tandy Corporation. And I uh, I haven't scratched my name in there, look at that. DJ. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, I don't know, the screw's gone. Jeez. Anyway, I... Um, modified this thing to add a fuse, just like the person there did with that one, because this thing never originally came with a fuse. And I modified that and I found, actually, that there were two supports in there that were the exact distance for a, um, I, this was used, I got the fuse holder, I salvaged it out of, you know, some bit of old gear from the uh, 70s, and it's, yes, I added the fuse in the series there. I had to have something in there. Um, I think I blew the ass out of a, yeah, shut resistor or something. That's probably why I added the fuse protection in the way I hacked with a couple of resistors that I had. Um, please forgive me, I was, you know, very old at the time, and like, this thing served me so well for so many years. It was a body dazzler. Still works to this day. Two jewels, thank you very much. Oh, uh, you've got to love product marketing. Check it out. There's lots of a few liberties with the uh, display here. This is uh, Photoshop in 1970 style. Look at me, nine one second. You don't know. It's from Slovenia. I don't want to you. It's from Gorez. Um, not like my last name. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, so we don't get many from Slovenia. I don't think you know where Slovenia is, do you think? No. We haven't worked out many countries, we're only in kindergarten. Yeah, we're only in kindergarten. Alright. So we're. It's inside mail, but it's always a mystery, isn't it? Yeah, alright. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And that's every big one. Oh, that's really tough. Bubble wrap. Maybe you can take that home. Huxley, what do you think? Does Huxley like bubble wrap? Um, I don't know yet. Okay. We haven't tried that yet. Okay, well, let's have a look. What we've got in here. Phoenix 
things connected on the front. Wow, that's a nice piece of work. That's got a rubber integrated rubber holster and everything there. Put a lot of work into that thing. But how do you think? It's a, well, I think that's a stylus. I think it's a touch screen as well. Yep, it is. It's a touch screen. Wow, so we can enter the rubber and we can feed oil, but it's like, it's like having, say, five millimeters in one, all built into one, and they use Phoenix connectors on the front instead of the regular banana jacks, like that. So it's kind of like a multimeter, but there's like many of them in there. And some block graphs can do all sorts of cool stuff. Well, yeah, so you can see these Phoenix connectors which are in the front. And here's the thing. Okay, so this is really tantalizing. This is any sensor. Three and a half inch color TFT display, eight measuring channels, measurement ranges from four millivolts to the scale, that's pretty good. To 2.5 volts. Well, 2.5 volts isn't that high. Hmm. Hi, right, it's 17 bits of accuracy, 0.01%. Wow, this is pretty schmick. Yeah, I like the faces. That's right, because they're key. That's called key. Well, I really do like the look of this. I don't know how to pronounce it, the can see, I guess. Um, connect any sensor. And uh, you've got uh, multiple power supplies here. You've got uh, eight um, analog channels plus, uh, it looks like four excitation uh, channels. No, it's you and I. Okay, right. And it's basically a done with a touchscreen done with I don't know why the voltage is up there like that. It's like a ridiculously high impedance input and they're just uh, floating. Might have to uh, short them out and uh, see what's going on there. But yeah, really feels like a good bit of kit. I love the, um, the rubber molding that they've got in there. Sits in your hand really nice. And uh, I've got the big power button and everything else. We can probably switch that off. There we go. Not sure of the battery life on the thing, but that boots up pretty darn instantly. Then it starts taking a while to read each range. Might be doing some serious uh, averaging there or something. Uh, no, I can't see anywhere to plug in a uh, uh, SD card or anything like that. So, uh, serial number made in EU, electronics in the middle, but EU with the best in the middle. If you want to check it out. But here's what's inside this puppy. It's got a, a service input. I'm not sure what uh, that thing's doing. Power adapter, USB, uh, the measuring block. Um, it doesn't, you know, like 0 0.1 to 20 million, 0 0.1 to 3 volts volume sources. So it's not like the other 2.5 volt single ended input. Uh, differential plus minus 1.25 volts. So all six ranges range is the power supply block. Uh, 2 to 5 volts to 13.5 volts only. So that's weird. It doesn't go below 5 volts. Anyway, um, it's, but it's designed just for sensors, you know, and, and stuff like that. So I guess it, you know, it's a uh, purpose designed for the job. It's not trying to, uh, you know, I do absolutely um, everything, but yeah, it's kind of, I know, it's just kind of funky. And uh, Bose, if that's how you're uh, pronouncing it, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, but uh, it says it started off as an um, internal uh, project, but then, uh, you know, they got to thinking, well, you know, some people might want to use this, and uh, it's going to have some extra development work and stuff like that done on it, and it's a high precision configurable instrument data weather, contains exploitation voltages and power supplies and for different sensors and parts. It's not tied to any one particular type, but geez, it's nice, it's just funky. Look at that. Oh, what have we got there? Yeah, and I just checked, it is pretty pricey, you know, 640 euro, euros for this puppy, but uh, if you need it for a specific uh, task, then it's probably going to do the business. Can we crack this puppy open? Hmm. And here's the blurb for the thing, we're scrolling text here. This is Dave Scroll, the unique Dave Scroll function. And uh, eight measuring channels, plus one square millivolts, two point five. as I said, that's 17 bit accuracy, 0.01%. So it's pretty schmick. I mean, you know, this is very nice. High mean living interference, but it's interesting to test. Four independently adjustable precision sources, uh, 0.1 to 3, 100 micrograms to 20 million, two independently adjustable power supplies, blah, 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 blah. Very nice design and produced in the EU. Yes, it is uh, pricey, but you know, they don't make many of these things, and it's designed, it's not designed for the hobby, it's designed for the professional industrial market. That's what they're aiming for. And in that case, it's really quite reasonable for a, um, what feels like a very, and looks like a very high quality uh, niche type unit. Couldn't get the rubber off, it's rather interesting, but you're able to stretch it and get access to the screws in there. So let's whip it open. Oh, there's a single 18650 uh, cell in there. Emmerich, ooh, there you go. Don't know ever, but it, it sounds good. Probably got protection built in. Don't know. There's our internal uh, memory, presumably. There's our internal login memory on the uh, micro SD there. But uh, yeah, so uh, all the business is happening right down the bottom here. Yeah, we've got ourselves a linear technology LGC 6655 voltage reference. That's pretty schmick. And uh, here's part of the course in uh, this type of intro. I love the old school uh, ceramic package on that. Beautiful. Anyway, that was quite uh, professional inside. No worries there whatsoever. My only small gripe on the design of this thing is that. Yeah, you can get in there and kind of adjust these from the top here, but these ones down here are going to, like, they just get in the way. I probably would have put them down either side like that and have the screws outwards like that and just have the cables coming out either side. It's just a, just a small thing. I know you can pull them out and, and screw them in that way, but it's just nice to be able to do them while they're in there. One thing I don't get is it's supposed to have eight single-ended channels, okay, and we've got our current excitation, our voltage excitation. Where's the common? Is it the power supply common? Like, I can understand if it's, you know, it's got four differential and you can choose, but if you've got eight single-ended, yep, sure enough, it's the power supply. It's the corresponding negative power supply for that channel like that. So if I plug, I'm feeding in one volt precisely into channel one. Oh, there it is, 0.99972. Okay, got it now. Kind of not obvious. As you can see, the update rate is actually very slow here. I'm not sure if there's any ability to uh, change that here. Anyway, system info, there we go. 
Sister Mutt time. Tell us how long it's been running. That's very nice. Nice touch there. I like that. Bobby Stacks. Ooh, Bobby to reference. Ooh. Counted it measure. The body, oh, how have they calibrated it? Maybe they've actually calibrated it and programmed it in there, perhaps. Hmm. Interesting. So let's go back. And oh, no. Logger. 60 minutes. Save interval. 60 minutes decimal separator. Um, now where is... Okay. We've got startup delay. There's no, like, logging and sample rate or anything. So I don't know. I mean, the save interval is what it, when it saves it to the, um, to the internal memory. It's startup delay. No, I don't have to worry about that. But no, there's no channels. Here's what you can do. You go. You can set up your uh, single ended or differential. No worries. You can set up your ranges. That's all very nice. Ooh, look. Oh, no needles. Ooh, what's going on there? Anyway, so you can set your excitation current. I presume you can... No? Can't type that in. No? So it's only 0 0.1 milliamp increments, is it? Okay. Fair enough. And 0 0.1 volt increments, by the looks of it. Yeah. So there's our ranges. And, whoops, 19, 39, 78. And that's as high as it goes. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely designed for sensors. Calibrated? Anyway, this is a rather interesting piece. I'm a bit disappointed that you can't set the sample weight, and it doesn't seem to have any graphing on there as well. I mean, they've got this gorgeous touchscreen graphical uh, display. It's a shame they're not uh, making use of it. I don't know. I haven't uh, RTFM. The manual is actually built into here. It's like in the USB, and it actually acts as a drive, and currently the manual's um, in there, but this is even a review, so uh, memory is still free. Exists. Continue. No, okay. Right. Ooh, what's that? <laughs> what is that symbol? I, I don't know. It's on the screen. I know what that is. I have no idea. Weird. Anyway, that's one interesting device. If you've got a need for um, sensor uh, interfacing and uh, logging and stuff like that, it's probably worth a squeeze. Yes, it's a pricey niche uh, product, but hey, it's kind of not worth. But yeah, I wish it had a bit more functionality for more general uh, lab use anyway. It would have been uh, nice to, I don't know, you might be able to set the sample rate or something like that, but yeah, and graphing, that'd be really cool. But anyway, check it out. I'm going to get in down below. So you can have got a Kickstarter. Do you know what that is? It's a crowdfunding campaign, and it's from Australia. They are from Hind Technology uh, here in Sydney. And let me just open this. And it finishes on the 24th of October. And by the way, if you are sending them a Kickstarter, make sure you do it. They've done urgent for a Kickstarter finishing on the 24th of October. Oh, oh, did I opened it the wrong way. I opened it the wrong way, dude. Ah, there we go. You got a note. Oh, not interested in the note. Uh, no, wait. No, no. Oh, there's the instructions. I've got to sample the box. That's all right. Yeah, all right. Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. There you go. You want to un unroll it? Yeah. It's kick, kick data. Oh, oh, yeah. We've got a VGA table. VGA table. She knows it goes on monitor. That's a lot of bubble wrap. Yeah. They did it properly. And by the way, yes, please wrap your things properly because a lot of people don't wrap their things properly and um, the postage system is um, not that forgiving. So, oh, oh, wow. Well, if they kickstart a project, oh, hang on, almost lost something. It's a USB stick. Here we go. Password is blank. Just press enter to log in. It's the weirdly um, titled model number, the HTG 5A1S. Second generation controller. I know, I was clued up on this. This is a, um, check it out. This is a super duper whiz bang um, all in one uh, CNC uh, controller. It does everything. It's an optimized place input encoded analog series. <laughs> That. Oh, that looks like a little uh, Bluetooth module or something, a little wireless module. So it's neat, but I don't know where that plugs in. That's strange, we'll find it later. Yes? Alright, and it's um, an X, Y, and Z axis, motor controls, spindle controls, shuttle job controllers, uh, relay outputs, everything built into the one thing. And uh, you can have a game controller, you can plug in a game panel, and you can control any keyboard, mouse, and all self-controlled. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 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 Yeah, Okay, we'll find where that goes, again. I'm sure it goes. No, I think we have to take it apart and plug it inside. But that's cool. So that operates a CNC machine with motors, with a big robotic arm or something you can control with it. Ooh, um, yeah. <laughs> cool. And that's a Kickstarter. And we'll link it in down below. But let's check it out. Two minutes here now. And how to play. And this is the Masso. Uh, even though it doesn't have a it, the name on it, it's just got this weird ass model number. It's called the Masso. And it's a CNC controller. It is a Kickstarter. And it looks pretty darn funky. It is all in one. You'll we'll have to watch out the Kickstarter uh, video and check out the, um, the, what's this, the website, irontechnology.com. Uh, Australian, I'm not sure if it's made in Australia, do they say? Uh, anyway, they've been developing this puppy for over two years. So let it to Take it away. There you go. Um, it's Sydney Junior Mechatronics student. Uh, it's been building electronics. They've been developing over two years. It contains all required electronics to, to run an entire machine on a single board. So you, you put up a Monday USB keyboard, um, USB drive, and everything else. And it's got 
all of them, I'll be like, listen, stuff in here, you can look up the, uh, like a, a paddle uh, controller, like a jog shuttle controller or something. Like, oh, no, that, that's down there. That might be the jog shuttle. Uh, a game controller to uh, do the thing. It's got all the uh, motor uh, drives, stimulus controls, PC allow ports and relays and opto isolators and coders and an entire uh, PC as well. Just hook it up to a VGA monitor. And, you know, like, the VGA, yeah, okay, but probably HDMI these days. I know, you know, you can get old VGA monitors that are really good fits for these sort of things. You can pick them up, but practically nothing. Anyway, I like the phone back up. It's a DIN layer now, um, so you can just mount it on a DIN layer of ports. It's very, very nice. And, well, it in and it up. I'm not actually going to hook it up to motors and drive stuff and everything else, but uh, anyway, we'll take it apart and hook it up as well. We've turned up first. Hmm. All right, let's see how it's up on. See what it does. Yeah, yeah, something's blinking. Something I don't want to take a keyboard. The USB is provided. USB stick. Have I got the right input? Probably all going with you. Oh, we're in that twin. Look at that. We're in. Beauty. Okay, I will not uh, pretend to know about, uh, you know, CFC controllers and all that sort of jazz. Um, it didn't say look up a mouse, so, um, yeah, I know, is that some sort of cursory type thing? Anyway, um, the end stop is, there's an end stop uh, warning uh, thing, it's plugging some connector or something like that, press button. Um, I don't know whether it plugs in that way or does it plug in that way. I don't know. I have to RTFM before doing that, so that's not keyed. Bit of a mistake there. People can plug that in the wrong way. And uh, that is a monster. It's an absolute monster. I wonder what's uh, wonder what's under there. Jeez. Anyway, um, I'd like to check it out. All these optical isolators are all um, in sockets. I'm not sure why they're not entirely populated. There's the ones over here as well, but that's uh, I don't know why. Actually, they need to be in sockets. I'm not sure what the rationale there is, because um, you should, you know, blow. Uh, Uh, differential uh, drivers and stuff like that. So really, you know, it's, it's no 
how the hell he tries to do this. It's really just a software and I.O. Like I said, I don't know a huge amount about being free language CNC controllers. They hook up to existing motor drivers and stuff like that, I would uh, presume. But anyway, yeah, I just assumed it would have had all that power, power type uh, goodness in it. But, no, um, but the software, you know, it's all in the software. And the software looks uh, reasonably comprehensive. It's face value. What if we knocked off the DeLorean, Greg? Yes. And that, yeah, one of the events at the back. Yeah. And one of the events at the back. Yeah. I don't know where that one goes. We'll have to find it. Yeah? Are Doc and Harvey still in there? Yes, still in there. Yep, they're travelling through time, aren't they? Yes, we tried to get the hover hovering the warrior working, didn't we? Yeah, we got it working once, uh, but then we bumped the table and it fell off in the... Yeah, and we tried to get it up there and tried to get it like up there, but... Yeah, tried to have a thing in the back now, but it didn't work, did it? Yeah, oh, well. Oh, well. Hovering the warrior's a tricky, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, all right, but that leaves us. This is from Hawaii in Asia. Um, this one is compared to a regular um, cell, so there may be uh, issues fitting it. 
Uh, inside, inside various uh, products and stuff. I'm not sure, but that, yeah, they, you know, the charger built in. That's pretty, pretty jazzy. I'm sure it's you know, somehow protected as well. It's definitely not the fuse protection in there, but there could be uh, active uh, protection. But anyway, check it out. The Lumen Top USB rechargeable 18650. You can probably get these on eBay, can you? I don't know. I just haven't really seen them before. I'd use 18650s, uh, but there. That's so convenient. It's the Lumen Top Prince. Um, no little specs on this puppy at all. Click to turn off and on, press to select the brightness. No medium height. So don't even know the specs. They couldn't be bothered including the specs with it. I couldn't be bothered venturing in it. But uh, yeah, it's it's like, geez, a really funky business. Look at that. Wow. It's not nice. It's all smooth as a baby's butt. But what? I, you know, I don't know what they're trying to go after there. It's just like, it looks like, I don't know, you know, crocodile skin boots or something like that. Um, what market are they trying to go after with the gold plate uh, on that? I just I don't know. But geez, it's heavy. Why don't you put the battery in there? Wow.